Ladies and gentlemen, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. It is truly an honor to be here once again. Today we got a very exciting episode of Papa's Poem Corner. And our guest is flipping amazing at poetry. Oh, come on down, Mr. Turtle. Oh, yes. And how are you today, Mr. Turtle? Harder than ever. That's fantastic. Okay, so I hear you got a poem for us today. Let her rip, baby. Roses are red. Turtles are green. Show me them feet, baby, and I'll show you my peen. Squeeze me? Well, I think that's enough of you today, buddy. Nani? <laughs> what a what a special episode of Papa's Poem Corner we've had today. This show's gonna get cancelled. Remember to like, subscribe, and turn on notification bells for more spicy poems. I'm gonna cry into my pillow tonight. <laughs> hey, 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 everyone. Rasbowski here, and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. And oh, baby, we are putting the lit into Literature Club and saving loads of girls' lives. Or at least that's the aim to save loads of lives, but... <sighs> Yeah, I smell troubles. And that burrito I had earlier. Jeezy crazy. Guys, if you're hyped for this video, then please hit that like button. It really, really is appreciated. Let's shoot for 2,000 beautiful likes. And for one final time, ladies and gentlemen, for one final offer, 4,000 likes. And I will go ahead and wear this uniform in the next video. I smell cringe. So let's just dive straight in, baby. Woo! Proper spicy comment. <laughs> Are you Jacksepticeye's sibling? If I say yes, will you just get off my back? Boy, boy, you're rich now. That's probably offended somebody. I lock the door behind me, heading to the bus stop. I barely make it to my stop in time. Oh yes, that's it. We're gonna go and see Sayori, who is in the hospital because she was spying on us. She was literally peeking in through my curtains while I was taking a big old dump. That's the kind of spying she was doing. She nasty. So we're gonna go along to the hospital and just check on her, make sure she's okay, because really, she saw us and Natsuki together, and well, green isn't a good color on Sayori. Let's bring her back to her pale self. Please, thank you very much. It's only a short ride to the hospital. I enter through the emergency doors. Moving as quickly as is allowed, I find the reception desk and explain that I'm here to visit Sayori. They give me Sayori's room number. I move quickly to the mental health wing. I find her number and enter the room. Okay, this is where it's all gonna pop off, most likely. Uh, Sayori? Robert? Sayori's mother leaves the room and gives us some privacy. I found your, uh, your poem. I, I figured. Siri, what's the matter? I, I, I told you, I'm always here for you. Speak to me! Well, last night I wanted to, but all I could hear through the door was you... You and her, laughing. It was like the two of you were laughing at me. Siri, sorry, sorry you, you don't understand. No, 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 I, I, I get it. It makes perfect sense. Siri, I... You, do you know how much it hurts to see you so happy? To know that I'll never be needed? It feels like a knife being plunged into my chest, Robert, over and over and over again, and, and, and I can't stand it anymore. Siri, Natsuki is staying with me because, Robert, you don't need to rub it in. You're happy with her. You, you don't need me anymore. There's no point hiding it. Just just go. Siri, please, please, just, just let me explain. Robert, go away, please. Having heard the commotion, a nurse peeks her head in through the door. She asks if there's a problem. Please, just just get him out of here. Sayori, wait, please. Whoa, I just got kicked out. Hold on a second. Complying with the nurse's request to leave, I'm forced to make my way out of the wing. Wow, rude much? Come on, girl. I'm escorted back to the reception area where I'm instructed to leave. Whoa. Look, nurse, I, I'm literally here to help. I, 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 I can't, I can't just escape. Look, why don't we just hang out? Hang out the front door like some kind of creeper and just wait to see if she needs us. And then if she needs us, then we can just dive inside, right? That makes sense. As I'm walking down the street, Siori's words ring in my mind. I caused this. This is my fault. I can't believe this is happening again. Turning the corner to my stop, I watch as the bus speeds off. Brilliant. God damn it. Oh. I begin to walk back to my house. Wow. Wow. Talk about the worst luck in the world. Actually, our luck compared to the other girls in this is actually probably absolutely fantastic. But damn, though, that bus speeding off. It's annoying. It took me a lot longer to get back to my home than I thought. I open my front door. Okay. Natsuki, you there? No answer. Oh, Jiminy Christmas, don't do this. I check downstairs, but she's nowhere to be found. Natsuki? I head upstairs and I hear a rustling coming from the guest room. I gently open the door. Oh! 
Oh, damn it! Oh, Jimmy Christmas, yeah. Whoa, jeez. Natsuki punches me in the stomach, almost dropping her towel in the process. Wow, okay. Wow, well, talk about awkward. Robert, do you ever knock? Sorry. Get out, pervert. So Sorry, sorry. Jimmy Christmas. I'm going to have to go back to manor school because that was straight up rude. My boy, nasty. Like some kind of sneaky perv ninja. I managed to get that out before Natsuki slams the door in my face. Kneeling... Onto my knees, winded, I gasp for air. It takes me a moment to collect myself, but I get back onto my feet. From the hallway, I repeatedly apologize through the door. Robert, you, you gotta be more careful. You could have seen me... You know, but naked. I don't know why she sounded like Baldy there. But naked. <laughs> wow. I know, I know, I know. It was, it was, it was an accident. I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, yeah, you didn't need to hit me so hard, though, for your tiny little fists of fury. I wasn't sure it was you until I'd already hit you. Uh, I'm sorry too. Just. Please knock next time, okay? I, I will, I will. Don't worry, I'll be knocking everywhere from now on. Even if I'm just going into the doctor's, knock, knock, knock. If I'm going to see my mum, knock, knock, knock. If I'm just going to go into the toilet and nobody's there, I'm still knocking. To make sure I don't get punched by some sort of tiny little ninja. Now, give me a moment to get ready. Sure, I guess I'll be in my room. I retreat back to my room and wait. I don't know why he said it like that. While I'm sat at the computer, my phone rings from across the room. Picking it up, I see it's a text from... Yuri? How'd she get my number? Uh-oh, she's a crazy Andre. Let's get the click big though. Is this Robert's number? It's Yuri. I have no choice but to reply, of course, because that'd be rude if you just totally curved her like that. Yes, yeah, me, what's up? I need to talk to you about what you saw yesterday. Oh yeah, about her um about her arm. I stare at it for a minute. She wants to talk about the cuts or are you talking about your arms? She takes a moment to respond, sending over a sizable paragraph. Yes. <laughs> what a paragraph. That is sizable. Yes. It's a brilliant paragraph. Okay. I was never given the chance to explain myself. I'm going to have to be careful with how I word my sentences. Yeah, because texts are terrible for getting the wrong impression. You may say one thing, and it could be just read a completely different um, way, depending on who's reading it and their mental state. Well, um... I'm gonna ask the questions then. All oh, right. Did you cut yourself because you might be depressed? No, I'm not depressed. In fact, it's quite the contrary. The pain is what motivates me. It's so exhilarating. It's almost like a high. Then <laughs> you're crazy, broad. How did you start? She takes her time writing out her response, the three pips indicating that she was typing flicker one by one. Eventually, her explanation comes out as a large-ass paragraph. Well, I've always had a morbid fascination with knives from when I was young. Before I started, I'd just collect them, all different styles, engravings, colors. They really are beautiful. And well, while reading a book some time ago, the topic came up. I was only going to try it once. Once, uh, just to see what it felt like, but it grew into a fully fledged addiction. I know, courtesy of Monica, that that's not a good position to be in, but I can't stop. There's just something about the blade effortlessly slicing open my skin that <laughs> excites me. It's such a thrill. I can't help it anymore. The sensation is too powerful. That's, that's not healthy. This is uh, something else. I don't even know what to do. But there's something nagging at my mind. This, uh, speaking of Monica, uh, how'd she find out? Another few minutes pass. Another paragraph. It was one day after the club had ended, no more than two weeks ago. I don't even remember what I was doing at the time, but my sleeve slipped up and Monica saw everything. We spoke about it for a few hours. She even invited me to her house to talk in private. She tried to help, I could tell she cared, but nothing she suggested actually worked. After she had to shut down the literature club festival, she took it out on me. She assumed that I was going to blame her, even though I really didn't think any less of her and when she had no choice but to postpone it. All I said was that she should have tried to get in contact with everybody before the festival started. She didn't really take it well. She threatened me, telling me not to make a scene about the festival in the front of the rest of you, or she'd tell everybody about my arms. 
I was very shaken by what she'd said, not just because of what she was threatening, but because I'd never seen that side of her. And if I'm honest with you, Robert, she scares me. Once again, I'm at a loss for words. I, I, I don't know the full story. I, I can't approach it now. I hesitate. If anything, I just want to convince Yuri to seek professional help for her self-harm. If I have a say in it, that can't go on any longer. I... I see. And have you ever considered getting help for your arms? How can I convince myself to get help when I'm the best I've ever been? The best she's ever been? I don't think she understands what she's getting herself into. Not, not to say that I fully do. Right. I can hear Natsuki moving through the house, humming to herself. Well, I gotta go. See you later. All right, Robert. I'll speak to you another time. In the club, perhaps? But uh, I just wanted to thank you for trying to help. Even if it won't change much, it shows that you care. Smiley face. <laughs> I, I do care. Bye, Yuri. I send her a final text, throwing my phone onto my bed. Natsuki knocks on my door. Yeah, come in. <laughs> See? It's not that hard, Robert. I said I was sorry. What more do you want? Mm, I'm not liking that mm, and that smile on your face. It's, it's just a nasty stuff. I'm an angel. Oh, I know. You can carry my Parfait Girls collection home for me. So, uh, this is your home now, eh? Oh, so sorry, I, I I didn't mean it like that. I, I I just thought I could, you know, stay here. I'm a little worried. I took my teasing too far. How can I say no to her? Well, of course, Natsuki. I was only trying to tease you. Though now that you mentioned staying, you might actually need this. Turning to my bedside drawer, I rummage through it for a second, looking for my spare house key. Unfortunately, I grab an adult toy that was there, and my face turns bright red. My phone beeps, saving the day. And Natsuki beats me to check in it. Wow! She she physically just beats me. She's punching me in the face. She be getting lessons from I, I shouldn't say that, damn it. Opening the message, Natsuki recoils, dropping my phone to the floor, disgusted. Hey, watch it! As I go to pick up the phone, I see for myself what had sickened Natsuki. Oh no. It's a picture of Yuri. She's sitting on her bed, her scarred arm is covering her otherwise bare legs. She's wearing a purple bra, small crimson heart drawn on her left breast with a red marker. Or at least I hope it is. I don't know how to respond. Closing my messages down, I throw my phone back onto the bed. Wow, she's sending me a loot. What is this? This is mad. Natsuki is distraught. Robert, what the, what the hell was that doing on your phone? I, I, I don't know. And her arms. The, the, the heart? <laughs> we were talking about her arms b b before. Um, I told her to get some help, but she wasn't listening to me. Now, now, Natsuki, I promise you, I didn't say anything to encourage her to send something like that to me. I retrieve my phone from my bed and show Natsuki the messages regarding her arms. I purposefully keep the messages regarding Monica hidden, as I don't want Natsuki to jump to conclusions. She's as confused as I am. Yuri, she needs serious help. Clearly. But why'd she send that to you? And to be so open about this with you? Well, 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 I saw her arms yesterday. As before, I omit Monica from the incident. She told me not to tell anyone, so I didn't, because I didn't know what the hell else to do. Robert, you know we're gonna have to talk to her about... This, it, it's not healthy to be cutting like that. And it doesn't help that she clearly gets off doing it. There must have been something, something in her head that made her think that this was okay. I've known Yuri for as long as I've been at the club. And yeah, she gets overly attached the moment anyone shows her any attention. I hate to say that, but it's true. But holy crap, I've never seen anything like that before? Well, we'll talk to her the next chance we get, okay? All right, Robert. Oh, and b before I forget, I take the spare house key from my desk drawer and hand it over to Natsuki. To my surprise, Natsuki's mood seems to completely shift. She pauses for a moment before jumping into my arms. Robert! <laughs> Thanks. You're the best boyfriend ever. Whoa, 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 whoa! Whoa!
Whoa! <laughs> the, the B word? Really? This is a family friendly channel. Thank you very much, Natsuki. Don't you think you're moving a little bit faster, Natsuki? Drop the B word right back. As those words escape Natsuki's mouth, she jumps back. That was the first time she called me that. I. I can't help but smile and freak out a little. Hearing her call me that made the text with Yuri, Mark's argument, everything melt away. They didn't matter. The more time I've spent with Natsuki, the more frequently I felt this way. Waking up next to her, reading with her, hearing her tell me she loves me, feeling her arms wrapped around me. I never thought I could feel this way about someone. Natsuki, you're the best girlfriend I could have asked for. You're just saying that, aren't you? No, Natsuki, I'm not just saying that. I love you. More than words can let me describe. I... So, it's official then? Yeah, I guess so. I love you so much, Robert. I pull Natsuki close to me, holding her tight. She pulls back for a moment and stares at me. I lift her chin up and kiss her. Damn, my boy is smooth. Yeah. Natsuki buries her face in my chest again and squeezes my man boobs. I never want this to end. <laughs> the two of us stay locked in this embrace for what feels like an eternity, but in reality probably only lasts a few minutes. Just as we're separating, the doorbell rings. You want to get that? I know. Oh, see if it's Yuri. See if Yuri's turned up at my house. I'm going to, um, well, it's going to be one hell of an awkward sitch. Natsuki heads back to the bedroom and I head downstairs. I wasn't expecting any visitors today. Oh, it could be Monica. Come along to uh, Monica block me. I peer through the peephole. It's Monica! There we go. Waiting patiently for an answer. How does she know where I live? Actually, that's a really good point. How does she know where I live? She's a crazy bro, that one. I crack open the door and slip outside. <laughs> Sliding into Monica's um, cold, deadpan look. Hi, Robert. Oh, hey! Shouldn't you be at school? Shouldn't you... <laughs> <laughs> Touche there, Monica. What do you want? <laughs> wow. <sighs> to apologize for the past few days, I was, uh... <laughs> well, I wasn't very nice to anyone. I've just had a lot going on this past week, and sorry doesn't fix everything. I... no. I just need to tell you something. I know this doesn't excuse my actions. What is it? I told my parents about the festival. They told me how disappointed they were in me. They think I have no control over my club. The fact that I couldn't get four people to show up on a special day like that. Robert, they've only ever expected the best from me. There's a reason I always try to be so perfect all the time. That's why I've been so harsh this week. I was just trying to control things that I shouldn't be. Monica, what about Siori? You saw her poem. I lower my voice a little. You knew that it was a no. For the record, Robert, I didn't. It was worrying, sure, but I never interpreted it as that. She ended up confessing everything to me over text on Wednesday, but still. It's okay if you don't accept my apology, Robert. I, I understand. I was heartless. I said things I don't think I'll ever be able to take back. I know that. I can't say that I forgive you for what you've said and done to all of us, especially what you did to Yuri. I, I, I know, but seeing your perspective, I think I'm willing to give you a second chance. That's all I needed. My front door opens. Oh, there you are. What the hell are you doing here? Robert, why is she here? Natsuki, she's, uh, she's here to apologize. Wait, 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 wait. What are you doing here, Natsuki? That, that doesn't matter. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Oh, no, things are going to get so awkward. Of all the people to find out, uh, there's something going on between you two, isn't there? I need to change the subject. I need to change the subject. Um, uh, Monica, we accept your apology. Oh, speak for yourself. Well, <laughs> we'll see you at the club later, okay? I slowly inch to shut the door, but Monica resists. <laughs> Not yet. You didn't answer my question, Robert. My brain goes blank. I'm panicking internally. I don't want her to know about Natsuki and I for fear of her intervening. But I also don't want Natsuki to be offended if I lie. Ah, I'm going to. Why are you giving me a choice? Why do I have to do this? Lie, tell the truth. Lie, tell the truth. Lie, tell the truth. There, why? Why? We? Why? We? Why? I'm panicking. This is bad. This is really bad. I'm going to save it. <laughs> and then I can just reset the game. Technically cheating, but I don't care. I'm going to tell the truth. I'm going to tell the truth because I'm going to go... 
Gwinatsky. I'm going to side Gwinatsky on this one, okay? Because I want her to be proud. I want her to... I still want to be the best boyfriend in the world. I want a mug that says, Best boyfriend in the world. That's what I want. So I'm going to tell the truth. Uh, well, um... Natsuki and I... We're dating. How about that? Hey, great story. See you later, Mon Mon. Don't worry. We'll keep it out of the club. I promise. I hope so. I can't bring myself to meet Monica's eyes. This whole situation is so embarrassing. <laughs> Robert, your face is so red. So it's yours, Natsuki. You two are pretty cute together. I am not cute. Oh, look at that face. Of course you are. Look at your eyes. It's adorable. Well, clearly Robert thinks so. Mm, she's right, you know. Shut it. Can we please just change the subject? Yeah, i love to. Well, Monica, I'm still mad at you for the horrible things you said to all of us. Good. It is deserve it. Be mad at me all you want. I came here to let Robert know how terrible I felt about all of this. And well, you two now, I guess. Do you really mean it? Or is this all just a ploy to get us to go to the club again? Well... Both. I started the club so that everyone can have a nice place to read and discuss literature and to hang out and make friends. I don't want that to be destroyed. Just like I don't want our friendship to be destroyed. Robert, do you believe her? I stopped for a moment thinking it over. Could Monica really expect me to forgive her after what she'd said to Siori and did to Yuri? Could I actually do it? I mean, considering her explanation, I feel kind of sorry for the pressure she's been put under. That doesn't take away from what her outburst did, and I'm certainly not about to forget it, but... So as long as it doesn't happen again... I think I can. Well, yeah, I do. Especially after what she told me. Okay, well... I'm gonna trust Robert on this one. I guess we'll see you at the club later, then. <laughs> Thank you. I promise, and no more outbursts. There better not be... <laughs> Monica tries to leave, but stops herself. Um, Robert, do you know if Theory's home? I couldn't find her at school. She's the last one of you I need to apologize to, and she isn't answering her calls. Um, I'm, uh, I'm not sure. You, you can knock if you want. It's worth a try. Right. <laughs> Thank you two again. And I'm sorry. See you later. As Monica walks away briskly, Natsuki pulls on my sleeve. <laughs> Let's go back in. I open the door and head to the kitchen, making some beautiful snacks. Woo! Uh, Octodox and Tim and them tentacles. We have some time before we have to go. Do you want something to eat? Uh, um, sure. Something about Natsuki seems off. I can't pin what it is, but something's bothering her. Could it be Monica? What's, what's wrong, Natsuki? Do you think the other girls accepted Monica's apology? I... Well, I don't know. Well, I mean, she's not spoke to Siori, has she? Well, I hope so. It'll be weird if we show up and it's only Monica and us. It won't really be the same. Natsuki's right. I didn't think about that. The club, without a doubt, would be different without Yuri and Siori. Hopefully they accept her apology, too. Yeah, hopefully, otherwise it's gonna be totes awkward. Jiminy Christmas. Okay. Woo! Next day, baby. After about an hour... Oh, I was gonna say, next day. No, we just chilled out for an hour. After about an hour of lounging around watching TV, I realized how soon the school day was going to end. We should get going. Give me a second. I'm gonna go for a dump. I head back to my room and quickly get changed into a uh, leather suit. Ah! You're ready, right? Well, I still don't have my uniform, but there isn't much I can do about that. Yep, I'm ready. Let's get going. Okay, so we're gonna go back to the club for the first time in ages. Natsuki locks the door behind us. Oh, she's using her key already. <laughs> Made herself at home quickly, didn't she? Mm, clingy. As we walk down the street, I feel her fingers curl around mine. We continue towards the school with moist palms. <laughs> Wow, it's a hot day. I can hear the uh, birds chirping all around us. Natsuki, a little bit more comfortable being affectionate in public, takes my hand in hers. As we enter the gates of the school, I see Yuri walking across the courtyard. Yuri! Yuri drops her books. <laughs> she must have not seen us. <laughs> Letting go of Natsuki's hand, I reach down to help her. So sorry, Yuri. Uh, it, it, it's okay. You just startled me. I take it you're here for the club? Yeah, pretty much. You come in. Yeah, Yuri, are you? Yuri nods her head in agreement. Good. 
Come on, man. Okay, we're all going to the club as, as a group of friends do, just chilling out, reading some lit richer flame books. So we all start the day in the club as we always do. Natsuki and I head off to the closet to pick out the next volume. Yuri has her head buried in yet another novel. Monica's off in a corner writing something in her notebook. Sayori is absent as she has been a lot recently. I would be lying if I said I wasn't worried about her, but there isn't much I can do right now. Robert, come on. Book time, baby. Monica perks her head up to give me a smirk. I really wish she hadn't showed up this morning. I joined Natsuki under the window, our usual spot. She's already grabbed the next volume of Parfait Girls as I sit my buttocks firmly down in the now groove I've imprinted on the floor. Apparently I weigh an absolute metric ton. Hey, lovebirds. So much for keeping it out of the club. Give it a break, Monica. It's not like that. You know the text in the series is tiny. Yeah, well, yeah, Robert's right. Not only that, we've always sat like this. Exactly. So what's the problem? I was just making a joke. Never mind. Monica walks away without another word. I may be giving her a second chance, but Natsuki isn't as forgiving as me. I really can't blame her. I'm not entirely certain why I'm even here. I'd certainly rather be at home with her. Well, it'll probably end up being worth coming here today if we can take her manga home with us. Hey! Natsuki waves her hands in my face, clicking her fingers to get my attention. Are you ready to flip the page yet? Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, I wasn't paying attention and uh, jeez. Sorry, I just get distracted easily. It's fine, Robert. I'm just glad to have Monica clears her throat. <laughs> Okay, everyone. I know the page we left off with. Hmm, okay, this is going to be awkward, probably. Natsuki and I join Yuri and Monica back in the center of the club room. Does anyone have any poems they want to share today? But, but, Sayori isn't here yet. Shouldn't we wait? Uh, I couldn't get hold of Sayori earlier. I doubt she'll be joining us. Sayori. I really hope she's getting the help she needs. I may not love her in the way she loves me, but that doesn't mean I don't love her at all. I've known her for the majority of my life. It kills me to see her in such pain. Well, okay then. Yuri falls back into her novel. Monica sits back at her desk, clearly agitated at everyone's lack of effort. Natsuki and I head back to the closet to continue reading. Hell yeah! We're getting right through this Parfait Girls book, and it's really fast. Oh, the music's changing. That's not good. Minutes pass by like seconds, and before either of us realize it, the meeting is over. Ready? Yeah, let's go. See you guys tomorrow. It's the weekend tomorrow, dummy. Oh, yeah. My bad. Yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right. No need to rub it in, guys. As Natsuki and I walk in out of the door, Monica halts us. Wait a second. I can walk you home, Natsuki. No, no. Um, I'm going over to Robert's. Yeah, yeah, we wanted to uh, keep reading. Well, another time then. Monica smiles sweetly. When she smiles sweetly, man, that's that's bad news when she smiles sweetly because that girl ain't an eight. She ain't sweet. She's sour, you know what I'm saying? It's unsettling due to her behavior the past few days, but if she's trying to give us a reason to forgive her... Then maybe she's being genuine? No, she's not. Trust me. Natsuki and I navigate the halls to the front doors. Huh? Crap, my collection. If you want me to get it, I'll only be a second. If you want, I'll be right back, girl. I take off through the vacant halls and the music is stopped. That's not good. I hope Monica hasn't left yet. Why? Why do I want to speak to Monica? I make it back to the club before she locks the door. Ah, that's why. Hey, uh, sorry. I forgot something. Oh, no problem. I, uh, I wanted to talk to you anyway. Oh, really? Okay. Monica follows me towards the closet. She locks the door, looking at me expectantly. Well, what? You remember what I said about living near you, right? I've seen her going to your place an awful lot. It looks to me like she hasn't been home in days. Or school. You've been skipping as well. Monica, that's that's none of your business. Oh, but it is. I can't have my club members missing school. It reflects poorly on the club. Yeah, I get that. We've just been, been what? Been hiding? No, 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 no. Are you sure? I found it weird. You never invited me in. 
Are you two ashamed to be together or something? No, no, it's not like that at all. Well, that's how it looks from the outside looking in, Robert. You two have to attend Monday, a full day of school. You ain't my real mom. This isn't a discussion. Okay, we'll, we'll be here. Good. Monica moves to the side, allowing me access to the closet. I grab Natsuki's Parfait Girls collection box and leave Monica behind. Why are you taking that? Natsuki and I read a lot at home. What's, what's it to do with you? I hear the lock click as I make my way back to the front doors. Natsuki's waiting for me. Let's go. Things got really weird with Monica in there. She wasn't sending me weird um, pictures like Yuri, but it was awful. Monica's line of questioning made me a little uneasy. Does she know that we've been basically living together? More importantly, does she know why? She's only known that we're a couple for a few hours. It's not like Natsuki could tell Monica that she was living at my place or why she is. Robert, snap out of it. Did you even hear a word I said? N -n -n Natsuki, I'm sorry. Uh, I've just got a lot on my mind right now. Whatever, I'll tell you later, okay? Okay, yeah, that, that's fine. Don't get sassy with me, though, girl. We walk for a few moments and we reach our house. Natsuki unlocks the door for me as I have my hands full. Oh, that's, that's, bless her, she's putting her key to good use. I rest the collection on the kitchen table. So, do you want to read or watch a show? I, um... I actually have to go and do something quick. I want to try and explain to Siori what's going on again. I'll be back in a few hours at most. Oh, okay, Robert. Um, unless you want to come with me. Um, she waits for a second thinking, <laughs> not really. I don't think she'd want to speak to me right now. Hey, that's all right. Well, speak to you later, yeah? Yeah. I give her a kiss and then leave again. I don't like, I don't like the thought of leaving her. Something, something really off. I wait for a few minutes before the bus arrives. As the bus navigates through the residential area, I see Natsuki's house. Her father's car is still absent from the driveway. That reminds me. I still don't have my uniform, but there isn't much I can do about that. I jolt to my feet and signal for a stop. Hell yeah, my boy's a hero. I rush off the bus and quickly walk down the street. My heart is pounding. What am I doing? Why am I doing this? I should be going to visit Siori, but I walk around to the alleyway behind Natsuki's house. I manage to open the gate from my side. I creep into the sliding doors we escaped through. Please open. I reach for the handle. I give it a firm but careful push. And the door slides open. Okay. I stand motionless in Natsuki's house, waiting for any idea as to what I'm doing here. Clothes, toiletries, everything I can carry. I quickly head up to the stairs and burst into Natsuki's room. Oh, it's, an, it's an adorable room in the light. I like this. Look at this. This is an, this is an adorable room. I, I, I like that. Good, good room. Good room, Natsuki. Nothing has been touched. The empty wine bottle and pill container lay on Natsuki's bed. The mess is still all over the floor. A shiver crawls down my spine. Grim. I begin to rifle through her belongings. I clear the closet of all the clothes I see, piling them up on the bed. I notice a large black suitcase in the corner of her room. Perfect. Unzipping the suitcase, I quickly jam her uniform, pajamas, casual clothes, and underwear into it. <laughs> She's going to freak out about that one. The desk is next. I sweep all of her makeup and accessories into my bag. Um, one last look around the room. My eyes lock on the bottle. I lift the overpacked suitcase onto my back, holding the handle over my shoulder, and make my way to the main floor. I set the suitcase down near the door and make my way into the base. Why are we going to the basement? Why are we going down there, buddy? I flick the light on to no avail. I clumsily bump around, eventually finding my way to the wine rack. Oh, I grab four bottles, as many as I can carry, my boy. What are you planning, you dirty boy? I haven't a clue as to what I've taken, but I hope it was expensive. Feeling the weight of the bottles in my bag, I realize there's no way I'll be able to carry this all the way home. I'll have to take the bus as far as possible. I check my phone for the time. Not too late. If I hurry, I can make it to the next stop. Okay, perfect. I move as quickly as I possibly could up the stairs. I grab the suitcase and slip through the door. I inch the door closed in hopes of not making any sound. Why, why, why would you worry about making sound? He's not in. Neighbors, I suppose. I turn and make a mad dash for the bus stop. Thank God this thing has wheels. I can see the bus rounding the corner as I exit the alley. Oh, crap! Before I know it, it's gone. Great. Now I'll have to walk all the way home with this. 
And that's the second time today I've missed the bus. The adrenaline is tearing through my veins. I can't believe I did that. And I, and I didn't get caught. Well, not yet anyway. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to jinx it, my boy. You might have security cameras or something at his house and you've just pilfered his belongings. That's probably not a good thing. I ended up having to take multiple breaks. Even one stop at a coffee shop for a drink. My boy's just sitting there grabbing a cup of joe, speaking to the local cashiers, maybe flirting a little bit and then making his way home to his girl. But I'm almost home. As I walk past Sayori's house, guilt begins to surround me. Oh, I should have gone and tried to talk with her. I shake the feeling and pick up my pace as much as I can. I get to the front door and Natsuki opens it before I can get my keys out. I bring the suitcase into the house as Natsuki begins to question me. Uh-oh. Robert, I saw you through the window. What, what, what the hell is all this? I never thought about how I was going to explain this. Uh, it's... Your stuff! What do you mean, my stuff? I lay the suitcase down in the living room, hanging my jacket over the back of the chair. I lay my bag down near the table. Thankfully, the balls didn't audibly shift. Natsuki just stares at me. Okay. A few long moments pass. Natsuki! I... I can't believe this. There's no way you'd... Natsuki hesitates to reach for the zipper. She finally opens the main pouch, revealing the majority of her wardrobe. She then opens the front pocket, spilling some of her makeup and accessories onto the living room floor. Natsuki is trembling. I'm, I, 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 I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't think... Natsuki literally jumps into my arms. I can't really see the picture. Oh, that's cool. Well, that's a cool picture. It's very bright around me, and it's a very dark picture. You guys will see it a lot more clear than me. That's a dope-ass picture. Robert, I love you so much. Why'd you? Well, you would have been stuck with only a couple of pairs of clothes otherwise. And if you're moving in properly, then you'd need your stuff moved too. Besides, he wasn't there, so it was probably my only chance to. She's totally speechless. I'm grinning stupidly because I'm a hero. Robert, I... I'm yours. <laughs> you, you, you mean what I think you mean? Absolutely. Oh, that's adorable. I wrap my arm around Natsuki's waist and she pushes me onto the couch on my back and she climbs on top of me. What? I feel her fingers running through my hair as I kiss her neck. I can't help myself. Neither can she. Um. Uh, 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 oh, okay, okay. Well, Friday night um, ended with a bang, shall we say. Jiminy Christmas, as willingly as I'd like to stay with Natsuki like this for the rest of my life. My phone's buzzer beckons me. She's fast asleep, so I do my best to escape her delicate grip without waking her. Wow, okay. Retrieving my phone from my pants, I look out of the window. It must be early morning. I should have disabled my alarm for the weekend. I shrug it off and pull my shirt over my shoulders. And it was a folded piece of paper on my desk as I pull my pants up. My name's printed on the front in Natsuki's writing? I open it. Okay. Hero! Oh no, this is gonna break me. I can tell this is gonna break me. Hero, I look to the sky and I can't help but wonder how you kept my life from being torn asunder. Was it you being nice to me when no one else would? Was it reading together and thinking it good? Was it your poems, your words entranced me, making me feel weightless? For those moments, bliss was so close I could almost taste it. Then you would go back home, leaving me alone with him. Every night was a struggle. That's the least I can say. It only got worse day by day until you saw me. I tried to hide. I've been treated me this way. I had a plan to escape. I would sleep and never wake. But again, you came to save me. You saved me from the pain. You saved me from the hunger. You saved me from me. You showed me back to the path filled with your love and our laughs. You're my hero. It's beautiful. Jiminy Christmas, I've got goosebumps. The feeling of weightlessness takes a hold of me once more. A warmth radiating from my chest pulsates throughout my body. I read the poem multiple times. The feeling grows more intense. I place the poem on my desk next to my computer. Careful not to wake Natsuki as I close the bathroom door. I make my way downstairs. Oh, 
Oh, that's adorable. I think I said bathroom door. It could have been bedroom door there. I'm just going for a dump, Nasky. Don't worry about me. I'm making enough coffee for the two of us in case she wants some. I sit at the kitchen table and wait. Oh... Oh, Jiminy Christmas, that was so good. Natsuki waves her hand in front of my face. Earth the robot! Anyone in there? Hey, <laughs> sorry, I didn't hear you come downstairs. Is that for me? Well, both of us, but... Natsuki takes two mugs from the cupboard, handing me one as I stand up to pour myself a drink. Thanks! I return the milk jug to the refrigerator. Natsuki and I take our coffees to the living room. Oh, this is adorable. Hey! Yeah? I, uh... I found your poem. Eh? This! I hand her the folded paper. I thought I left it by the computer. I loved it. Oh! <laughs> I... Am I... Really? Your hero? What else could you be, dummy? Natsuki kisses me on the cheek and giggles to herself. I smile warmly back. So? What do you want to do today? No clue. She gives me a playful grin. I beam back at her, only interrupting to take a sip of my coffee. It's unusually sweet. That's... Strong. <laughs> What's the matter? Can't handle a cup of coffee. She knocks him on my right arm jokingly. What? No, no, it's not that. It's just sweeter than I normally have it. Oh, yeah. I put a couple of teaspoons of sugar into yours while you weren't looking. I was just making your cup the same way I make mine. You like it? It's a little too sweet for my taste, but I don't mind it all that much. Just... Let me know next time you go spiking my drink, Natsuki, you dirty little creature. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I beckon her to come and sit on the couch next to me. She hops over, careful not to spill her own drink. I turn on the TV as I wrap my right arm around Natsuki's shoulder, holding my mug in my left. She digs her head into my chest and uses her spare hand to flick through the channels with the remote. After a while, she settles on something to watch. It's a rare adult cartoon. A nasty good. We lay about together for hours, watching a film or two TV programs. After a while, Natsuki speaks up. Um, I'll be right back. Whoa, whoa, what's up? I'm... Gonna use the toilet quickly. Sure, go ahead. I'll pause this here. As Natsuki leaves the room, I hit the pause button. I'm enjoying Natsuki's company quite a bit more than the film we're watching now. And this is one of my favorite films. I hear the toilet flush distinctly and then an air freshener going off. She's done a big old stinky dump. I hear her rush into my room. What's she up to? A minute or so later, Natsuki returns with a scowl and my phone in hand. Uh-oh. What's on my phone? It's for you. She hands me the phone, currently engaged in a call with an unknown number. Hello? Robert, we need to talk about Yuri. I'm taken aback. Does Monica want to know what Yuri told me? Or sent? Uh, I'm listening. In person, I mean. As soon as possible, I sigh. Fine. Where? There's a little cafe on the other side of town. It's a couple of blocks from Natsuki's place. She'll know where it is. I'll pay. All right. I guess I'll see you there in half an hour. All right. Sounds good. She hangs up. I pocket up my phone as soon as I get out of my seat and make my way to the hallway. I grab my jacket from the wall-mounted hanger and pull it over me. You, uh, you want to come? Sure. Good, because I wasn't looking forward to facing Monica alone. <laughs> yeah, after what she did. Even if she did apologize after, and you never know. Throw my jacket on, I peek out of the door and see that the area is still cold and it's raining as if to add insult to injury. My hair will get all moist. The cafe is too close to warrant getting a bus, which means we'll have to stomach the weather. Ready? Just a second. I'll just get my coat and we can go. Oh, yeah, because we got our jacket, didn't we? Did we buy our new one? I can't remember. We did buy our new one. I do remember. <laughs> Wait, Robert, have you seen my scarf? Yeah, it should be in the closet as well. I can't see it. I look in the closet and I see on the shelf just out of Natsuki's reach. I grab it and hold it over her head. It's right here, silly. Natsuki attempts to snatch it from my hand but fails to jump high enough. A couple more attempts, she hops in the air to try and catch it but to no avail. She's just a tiny little midget. Defeated, she stares down at me. Please. All right, fine. Here. Sorry, I just couldn't help myself. Yeah, you've proven that a few times now, haven't you? Wow, is that a Call back to last night? Uh, she punches me jokingly in the arm. Hey, that was a little uncalled for, don't you think? Not really. You're lucky I didn't just beat the crap out of you while you still had my scarf. Oh, 
Would you really? Yeah. Well, what if I like it when you play rough? Huh? Natsuki goes bright red, stammering. <laughs> nice one, Robin. Where to get him out? Now, come on. Let's go. We shouldn't make Monica wait unless we want to feel her wrath again. She says that trying to suppress a grin. <laughs> Natsuki hops out of the door and trips over because she's tiny. I follow with much less enthusiasm. Okay. That seems like a very, very good place to end off this episode. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you did enjoy today's video and enjoy the whole uh, snowy and romantic atmosphere of today's video, then please hit that like button. I really, really appreciate it. I can't remember what the like goal was. 4,000, 5,000 likes? I don't know. Hit it, and I'll, I'll, I'll wear that uniform. I've been Razbowski. You've been the beautiful Raspberries. As always, for watching, and I love each and every single one of you. Goodbye. Papa's Poem Corner. <laughs>